for that there you job. Go. And everybody get some and, fight yep. and, and what bummed me out of, about your oh, sorry to interrupt go ahead, you. No, go ahead. What bums me out your situation is uh, He's not sorry interrupted, by the way. He does it all the time. I'll get emotional. Is I thought we were all gonna fight, man. Yeah. I thought we were uh, what yeah. happened? Yeah. I thought we were all gonna fight. Right. We're, Let's rewind that again. Oh, this guy is so perfect. Your situation is uh, I'll get emotional. Can you let, let's just take a minute, a step back a bit, right? John Chris, the guy on the left hand side, is a, I'd say, he's in a position to cry because essentially, if you look at the, where have I got it? I've got it somewhere here. This is the John Chris accusation, right? This is, I've got it on the screen. John Chris has a position to cry. Look at this. The allegations include, um, but are not limited to, individually sexting multiple women during the same time period, initiating sexual relationships with married women and women in committed relationships, offering to show tickets um, in exchange for sexual favors and repeatedly calling these women late at night while drunk. So clearly him just being a bit of a pest you'd say maybe a sex pest to the nth degree maybe for being really harsh but essentially he was trying to engage in sexual relations with adult women now they are, some of them are married so he's not a great guy never met him don't get me wrong there's someone you want to leave around your wife or around your sister or even your mum. i know that to be a fact but there's nothing untoward or creepy or slimy about what he's doing too much pent up horniness from being like a straight laced christian guy do you know what i mean for the most part that's what basically he's suffering from that's basically his greatest crime being a christian and kind of you know being too horny and all that sort of malarkey but for the most part <laughs> for the most part his crimes pale 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 in um significance or relevance to what flipping brian calendar so the fact that these guys are crying and trying to make it all about them is legitimately <laughs> legitimately hilarious but again let's go back to this it's john christ position to talk about this sort of stuff and brian Callum maybe has position to talk about it sort because of, it involved him and his life why is he making himself the center of attention why is he the one wanting to be emotional why is he suddenly now tearing up crocodile tears in this regard he somehow made an issue that doesn't even involve him all about himself it's absolutely incredible incredible i thought we were all gonna fight man yeah. i thought we were uh, what yeah. happened yeah i thought we were all gonna fight right where did you guys go right you left us well we weren't a community no we weren't yeah, we, friends. Yeah. you guys were Turns only we our friends because we could help you yeah. yeah and then when we need your help at the most you guys are nowhere to be found even to this yeah. fucking day. Yeah. Fuck you. But you got to forget. Because sure. people are afraid. For, I, and they don't know. I don't, I don't hold everybody resentment. Has, Sometimes they don't know. I don't, hold don't know. I don't hold resentment. I don't even think about it, yeah. to be honest with you. But also, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Yo, this guy, this guy, this guy is legitimately one of the worst. No hold resentment, but still fuck you. I want to cry and I'm shaking with rage, but I don't hold resentment, right? I'm the best guy, the beast of a guy. I'm a great guy, right? I'm a great guy. That's not nice. First of all, no one needs anything from the fire and the kid dudes. Number one. Secondly, let's be also real in this whole matter. When the whole thing went down, we all know the famous video of Chris Aaliyah when that went down and he got cancelled. How Brenda was sobbing and crying and literally Bogey was coming out of his nose. And Brian Callen couldn't cry because he just got his eyelids done. That was what they did. But when he got cancelled and everything went down, did they invite Chris Aaliyah on their show to explain himself to give his side of the story no he was completely iced from their podcast and their platform did brian callen appear on the show after he got alleged from what after he got accused of the r word and the other things that he got accused of no so everything that they're kind of pointing the finger at other people at they didn't necessarily practice it themselves and if we're completely honest and we really go a bit granular and a bit inside baseball when shane gillis was going through what he went through at snl and he got booted off of that saying he's racy jokes about asians who was the first person to stick the boot into shane gillis when that story came up and dismiss his um grievances and why he was unfair that he got let go and you know the counter culture around that these two they didn't necessarily fight, especially Brendan. He didn't necessarily fight um, in Shane Gillis's corner. He didn't say anything about him and be an advocate for him in any way, shape or form. When, what's his name? Ari Shafir went, went, went through what he went through with the whole Kobe Bryant joke. And after he died with the helicopter thing and him screaming outside the stadium. What the hell did Brendan Schub say about Ariel Hawani then? What did he say about him? Did, did he back him up also? Of course he didn't. Yeah, big up Sontime works well for the subscribe. I appreciate it. Like who, who what, what did they say? They didn't back those guys up. So all this stuff that they're talking about, they never ever practice it themselves. So it, it really does feel incredibly disingenuous that they're expecting all of this support and help from their friends when it's not the case. And let's go a step further. Let's imagine they want the support and help from their friends. It could be argued, as they like to say, it could be argued that their friends in the community that they call community of stand-up comics, which doesn't really exist because they're all clout monsters, but let's imagine it is a community. They know each other better than anybody. 
because they see each other in clubs late at night you know away from the cameras in the green room behind closed doors in dimly lit bars and clubs and bar and theaters whatever it may be they know what they get up to they know what they speak about in green rooms they know what they speak about in the parking lot they know how people actually get down away from the cameras even though they present themselves to be a family man they know what they're doing behind the scenes so if anybody could really if anyone's actions should be believed in terms of how they react to people maybe it's the friends and the fact that none of their big time friends came out and supported them and really stuck their neck out for them shows that maybe there was some validity to what the claims were, were putting out there in terms of Chris Lee and what he did and what Brian Callen did because with the exception of Sam Tripoli who deserves all the credit in the world even though he's an absolute freak in his own nature and his own way so and has his own issues that he has to deal with Sam Tripoli was the only person who really stuck his neck out and supported those guys but clearly Sam Tripoli isn't the person that they wanted the support from because Sam Tripoli at that time his career or his career on podcasting and stuff wasn't the greatest he wasn't really red hot so even though his support was there and he actually legitimately went so far as to flip and start an entire podcast with Brian Cannon and sit next to him and essentially co-sign him and everything that he did or were accused of it wasn't who they wanted they wanted obviously the big names to come out and support them but again they shot themselves in the foot who did it specifically Brendan Shaw when he did the whole Brian Bobby Lee thing I'm sure that didn't really sit well with some people in the community that they talk about the fact that he tried to fuck Kalila at the time Bobby Lee flipping in a relationship with that woman that probably didn't ingratiate them to you know the community and people around them and stuff so all this stuff that he's talking about everything that he's flipping complaining about is basically self-inflicted and it's very rich coming from him because what can you really gain from these guys by actually supporting them in any kind of meaningful way because they showed you their true colors Brian Callan the guy next to him immediately threw Chris Lee under the bus when he got accused of what he got accused of he he said he didn't know the guy they hardly go out they don't really meet they're not exactly friends he's only met him a handful of times he immediately threw him under the bus when crystal got cancelled immediately so if you do that to your own friend how do you expect other people who don't know you too well to react and see how it happens to you like how do you expect them to react when they see you do that to your own friend you want them to do something you didn't actually do to your own friend itself it doesn't make any sense it doesn't even compute but then saying what he's saying doesn't make sense either because he decided to what give brian cannon a timeout i think the story goes he said he wanted to have a timeout but essentially brian Callum wasn't on the show for ages after he got accused of rape wasn't like he wasn't a show for time only only a year later and several co-hosts later did flipping brian Callum come back and by that time you know the the rumors or the story was what it was but i just find all that stuff incredibly disingenuous and really an insult to most of our intelligence that they legitimately think this makes any kind of sense in any kind of meaningful way it really is disturbing really 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 is disturbing that they legitimately think the world revolves around them but i really want to go back one more time and just see brendan pretend to cry this whole performance is absolutely amazing to be honest him trying to make it all about himself he did actually he made it all about himself john chris has a legit grievance that he can actually talk about brian cannon has one also but brendan Shaw wasn't involved in the slightest the worst thing he did was try to ask a female comedian allegedly to walk him to his truck and obviously try to fuck you know bobby lee's girlfriend at the time but apart from that what is he involved in this he's not involved in the slightest but here he is trying to fight it and trying to put himself involved you know be the center of attention as per usual but this is an incredible performance let's play this and just me out of, about your uh, sorry to interrupt go ahead, no, go ahead. but me out your situation is uh, i'll get emotional is <laughs> no you won't get emotional i'll get emotional get emotional let's see the tears come on perform i thought we were all gonna fight man. Yeah. i thought we were uh, what yeah. happened yeah i thought we were all gonna fight right this nigga legitimately expected Joe Rogan to put to jeopardize his flipping multi-million deal with Spotify to what to platform flipping Brian Callen and Chris D'Elia. Did he really think that? Did he really think that? Did he really think that was going to happen? Legitimately think that's going to happen? And let's be. <laughs> I don't like to bring it up because I don't want to, you know, get people in trouble. But let's be real. Do you guys remember when flipping Joe Rogan shared that story with Eric Weinstein about how he was going to smash some girl or no, some girl wanted him to smash. And obviously at that time he's in a relationship said he can't do it. So then he said, oh, but you can go and hook up with my friend Brian. That's the story he shared, shared to Eric um, flipping Weinstein. And then he said, oh, Weinstein, sorry. And then he, he recommended his friend to Brian and then the girlfriend called Joe Rogan up the next day screaming, saying, your fucking friend came in me. I told him not to come in me and he came in me or something like that. And and he was laughing about it okay if that story is true that already shows you <laughs> the kind of time that brian callen's on so those allegations that came out in the los angeles times they don't sound too far-fetched from the brain that we'd known all these years in terms of podcasting and stand-up comedy and whatever else he does it's not too far-fetched no one's saying you can actually make a direct correlation between our word and what that story is and maybe that story was a something of fiction and just something to kind of make people laugh whatever 
But let's be real. Do you expect that Joe Rogan who knows Brian intimately? They were best friends. They started off together to legitimately be the person who's going to be like, yeah, let me come bring him on platform and let's talk about that. Because the moment he would have done that, that clip would have come done around again. And most likely that Spotify deal that is, some people estimate is anywhere between 100 million and flipping 300 million for just a flipping licensing deal would have been in jeopardy. And he's not going to risk that money for flipping these degenerates. Come on. Where did you guys go? Right. You left us. Well, we weren't a community. No, we weren't yeah, friends. We, yeah. You guys were Turns only our we friends because we could help you. Yeah. yeah. And then when we needed your help at the most, you guys are nowhere to be found, even till yeah. this fucking yeah. day. <laughs> Fuck you. But you guys. <laughs> yeah i love it but you know what this does prove the homeless cats theory on the subreddit because those guys are always on the point they were saying from ages ago that since everything has kind of settled down there's been a distinct lack of quality guests from within that kind of joe rogan extended universe you don't really see a lot of those guys around right andrew santino tom segura off the top of my head i'm thinking of even ari shafir mark norman all those guys have basically pulled away from them for the most part you don't really see a lot of them around them anymore in any way shape or form so it's quite interesting to see that happen and clearly there's been a line drawn in the sand people have you know this put their you know have decided who their loyalties lie with and clearly the fire and the kid guys aren't the main draws or i mean they're not the main attractions right nobody knows who you are <laughs> you gotta forgive because sure. people are afraid For, I, and they don't know i don't, I don't hold never, yeah you do I don't, hold don't yeah. I don't hold resentment. I don't even think about it. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah, you, how can I think about it without angry? But anyway, that's Brian. That's Brendan Shaw being an absolute contradiction and being an absolute muppet and thinking that people owe him more than he's actually willing to give people. Oh, that he gives his own next sit next to him. I don't know. Uh, it drives me insane all this stuff. It really does because it's a real insult to my intelligence and to our collective intelligence. But again, these guys are going to do what they want to do in it. What can you do when it comes to all this sort of stuff?